What's up everyone? FF Dev here, and in this series we're going to be teaching you the basics of C++, and I'm going to be using Visual Studio 2022 as my IDE. You can use whatever IDE that you want to. This is just the one that I prefer. I know a lot of people use um, Visual Studio Code and other IDEs. And if you need help setting that up, there's plenty of tutorials online for that. So I'm just going to try to get straight to the point on coding. After you're on this screen or the equivalent screen on whatever IDE you're on, you're going to want to go to Create New Project. And then we're going to create an empty project. And we're going to name this uh, C Gaming Series. And just go ahead and click on create. And then from here, there's a few things I like to do. On the right side, you can see the solution explorer. I like to go to the third icon over from the right that says show all files and click on it. I prefer to have that instead of its little virtual setup that it has by default. And first thing you're going to want to do is right click, add, in a new folder, and we're going to name it source. SRC for source. This is just how I prefer to set it up. Then you're going to right click the folder, add a new item, and you're going to make sure it's a C++ file, .cpp, and we're just going to name this main. All right, now we got our main file. We're going to add a few lines of code here. So every C++ program, if you're brand new, has to have a main function. And the way we're going to um, start that, so we're just going to go ahead and press enter a few times. Click it down. We're going to type in int main. You're going to put these curly brackets here. Press enter. Or the uh, parentheses there. And then add the curly brackets underneath. And um, just a little fun fact to know the main, you know, it says int there. It stands for integer. It always returns an integer. But in main function, you don't have to put it, but it actually has this, return zero. I'll just put that there just for the syntax, but you don't have to put it there in main, but it's understood as being there. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a hashtag, and then we're going to put include, and we're going to put IO stream. You're going to want to use these little, I don't know what these are called, these little arrows under the correct name and put IO stream in there. This way it stands for input output stream that way we can print to the screen. And now that our project is set up basically I'm going to explain what in in is. int is for integer. So we can go ahead and declare an integer. We'll just go ahead and declare it in the main function int i. But you can name it whatever you want. However, you do always want to give it a value and we did not initialize it with a value I'll show you guys what I'm doing here actually this is just to make things easier well actually no I'm gonna show you the right way so we're gonna to print this out to the screen to show its value we're gonna type in std colon colon c out arrow arrow i then more arrows std endl for end line and I'm going to show you what happens when you get ready to run this if you don't give a value to it. So int i. Actually going to throw an error. Because it is uninitialized. Sometimes it'll run like that. Sometimes it won't. Let's see if I put it in main and we try to do it that way. Or outside of the function if it'll run. It will run as zero. But there's actually no telling what you will actually get there without it being initial, initialized. So you always want to initialize it. So I'm going to put it back in here. And I'm just going to put it equal to zero. All right. Now that we got it set to zero, we're actually going to do one thing that I'll show you what it can be, what an integer can be used for. So what would make more sense would be if we named it health. So now integer health equals zero. We'll put it as 100. And I, I lost a few things here in the recording. It crashed, unfortunately. So I'm just going to go ahead and add the, the command just to print it. That way I can show you. 
but using it as a uh, variable like health makes more sense. So now you know that your health is going to be 100. That makes sense for a game because 100 is max health. Now we're going to be talking about a few different types of values. We're going to be talking about floats. Float values are decimal point numbers. So let's say we want damage and we're just going to go ahead and initialize it to let's say 10 point five and I add an F. You don't have to add the F in most IDs, but it's always good to add the F for the syntax, which stands for float. And I'll just go ahead, change this variable here to damage. And then when we hit the compile here, see what it's going on. 10.5. Alright, so the damage prints out 10.5. So you see how this could be useful. Now we're going to learn about a new variable called a string. A string holds basically characters or whatever so we'll name something like player name. That way we can store the player's name. And um, when strings are initialized they're put in between these um, quotation marks here so that we can name our character Billy and we're not actually saving it to the variable here I'm just showing you that you could have it print out Billy just like that and that's fine. But why would we want a variable for, for like the player name itself so we could save it? That's so we can take input from the player. So what we will do now is after we have our player name created, is we're going to go ahead and change this here to player name. So when we get done, it'll print it. We're going to type in std, c out, and then we're going to use the... Uh, the way that we initialize that, as I showed you earlier, how it's got to be in quotations. We're not going to enter the player name yet. We're going to say, please enter the player's name. And I'll put colon there. And I'm going to put the inline. Actually, we don't even need an inline there. Now that we have that there, we're going to say std. CN, which is going to take input from the player, and then we're going to have this player name. We're going to basically what the CN says we're reading for this player name. So it's going to ask, give us a prompt to type in. It's going to display this message first, and it's going to want us to type something in. It's going to, and then what we type in is going to be stored in the player name. And after it's stored in here, it's going to go to this line, and it's going to print out the player name so we can see it. So now when we hit the run button, Play, please enter the player's name, let's say Billy. We hit enter, and then it prints out Billy. And which you can also add more parameters to this if you want. So we'll just say the player's name is, and then we'll add a few more arrows here. You can type in multiple different types into the C out function. So this right here, you know, it's just directly, this is just characters, which can be stored in a string. And this right here is a string. In between each variable that you're wanting to print out, you need to put the little arrows. And this std end line, that basically just ends the line and puts on the new line. Why I didn't put one here was that way the cursor would stay right here when it asked you to print in the player name, or to input the player name. So now, whenever we run this, we just type in, let's say, Bob. The player's name is Bob. And now that we got that done, I think this just about covers the very, very basics. And um, in the next video, we're going to be covering a few more topics, which will help you get going on where you need to be to develop a game and so by the end of the next video I believe we're gonna um, try to do a little word guessing or number guessing game if you guys are enjoying the content so far be sure to hit subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video later